Since Vegas Pro 16 released to the market last fall, we've spent a fair bit of time testing with it, but unfortunately, a lot of that testing has been frustrating, and there are some tidbits in this video to show why. But despite what we believe to be a less than ideal situation for NVIDIA Vegas Pro users right now, we wanted to finally publish something that tackled performance as it stands today, regardless of how strange or poor it might be at times. Our earlier Vegas Pro tests revolved around simple AVC and HEVC encodes, but we've since expanded our testing to include additional encodes using Vegas Pro's built-in FX filters, as well as some playback tests. But first, there's some explaining to do. Our Vegas Pro 16 testing ramped up in December after we overhauled our testing scripts, but things unfortunately went south pretty quickly. It became clear almost immediately that NVIDIA's graphics cards were struggling in our tests, despite there being no logical reason for it, except for maybe the lack of optimization. We hate to kick things off with a broken performance graph, but it's important to highlight issues that are still ongoing. Here we can see that every GeForce card performs their LUT duties without any sort of issue, but the Quadro and Titan cards prove to be ridiculously slow, at least four times slower than they should be. In terms of playback performance, these affected graphics cards delivered LUT frame rates of about 1 to 5 FPS, whereas every card other than Quadro and Titan could enjoy full performance. Interestingly, a single day after our written article on this topic was published, Magix released the fifth major update for Vegas Pro 16, and even mentioned slot issues in the release notes, but unfortunately, some retesting done with the latest version has proven that these issues still persist. After benchmarking some 20 Gravis cards, we discovered a small fix for the issue that's not really ideal, but it gets the job done. In NVIDIA's control panel, a profile for Vegas Pro isn't automatically added, so you can do it manually. Once you click the Add button, Vegas Pro should pop up near the top of the list, making it easy to find. And after adding, the problem of poor LUT performance will go away. Well, kind of. Further testing shows that after doing this, regular encode performance decreased super slightly. We're talking about encode times that are about 5 seconds worse. But the trade-off is that LUT performance would return to pretty normal levels, and we wouldn't be surprised if it improved performance in some other ways as well. Nonetheless, if you're an NVIDIA user encountering performance issues in Vegas Pro, merely adding a profile to the NVIDIA control panel may be all you need to do to rectify things, as nonsensical as it may be, especially given that your Vegas Pro settings can completely match your global settings. We hope you're ready for another round of Chart Simulator, because we have quite a bit on tap here. Our testing includes basic AVC and HEVC encodes to create a bit of a baseline for each GPU vendor's encoders. We then add some real work by encoding two projects equipped with LUT and median filters, the latter of which will also be used for CPU testing. Finally, some playback tests are included with the help of the same LUT and median projects. For this video, we've tested 20 graphics cards and 12 processors. Since this is a workstation-focused video, we've included the full stack of relevant Quadros and Radeon Pros that we have, as well as NVIDIA's Titan XP and Titan RTX. The GeForce GTX 1660 Ti was added because it's the lowest-end non-RTX GeForce Turing, while the RTX 2060 was chosen for being the lowest-end RTX Turing. The last-gen top dog for Pascal, the GTX 1080 Ti, has also been included. On AMD's side, we have the top-end Radeon 7, as well as the RX Vegas 64, and the Polaris-based RX 590. It's probably safe to say that there is a fair amount of ground being covered here. For the first set of results, we have some AVC encode performance immediately highlighting that there have been some huge encoder improvements on the AMD side since the Polaris days. If you're on AMD, you definitely want to be equipped with one of the Vegas if you can help it. And yes, the coincidence in naming and performance strengths doesn't escape us. With HAVC H.265 encoding, there's very little difference across the entire range of GPUs. Even the Polaris-based cards which faced difficulty in the AVC test redeemed themselves here. While every GPU takes longer to encode with HEVC, you won't really need a high-end GPU to get decent performance out of it. While we tested many FX filters to figure out the best one to use for GPU testing, we ultimately chose LUT as it's incredibly popular for color grading the images, as well as Median, an effective but grueling denoiser. With performance on many NVIDIA GPUs fixed thanks to the addition of the profile in the NVIDIA control panel, we're seeing far better scaling than we did earlier. AMD's Polaris-based GPUs once again suffer at the bottom, but the company's top-end GPUs enjoy the opposite. They all sit at the top of the chart a fair bit ahead of NVIDIA's competition. This mirrors some strong performance we saw out of AMD from Vegas Pro 15 last year, although our tests were much simpler back then. The duration of the clip for our median test is shorter than it is for the LUT test, but despite that, most of AMD's Polaris cards took even longer for this second encode, while the highest-end Radeons once again enjoy sitting on the top, delivering super strong performance. Even the RX 590 managed to keep up with a card like the Titan RTX, so we definitely feel like there is some optimization that could be done to improve performance on the NVIDIA side. We've seen that graphics cards can scale well in Vegas Pro, but so too can CPUs. 
With this chart, we can see a clear difference between the top and the bottom of the stack, with the lowly 4-core Ryzen 5 2400G proving itself to be anything but a proper workstation chip. AMD's and Intel's top-end chips naturally sit at the top, while both the 8-core Intel 9900K and AMD 2700X score about the same level of performance. There are some anomalies here though, such as how the AMD 16-core 2950X scores better than the 24-core 2970WX. This could be tied to odd regression issues that occur on AMD's highest-end Threadrippers, a subject we talked about on the site before. We'll toss a link in the description for those who might want to read into it more. In a recent performance deep dive we did on the website for Blender 2.8, we found that sometimes you can get away with a low-end CPU as long as your GPU is competent enough. Vegas Pro is different, because both the CPU and GPU are heavily used, so effectively, the better you have of each, the better your overall experience is going to be. We can prove that with this graph, taking a look at heterogeneous rendering, which happens to be the default. For its price, the 2400G is a great processor, but it's clearly not suited for heavy workloads, like encoding and rendering. Granted, a chip like the 2700X costs a fair bit more than the 2400G, but the differences in performance is huge for work like this. It's only at the very top end of the CPU ladder that diminishing gains will be seen. For capturing playback performance, we used the same median project as before, and a slightly edited LUT one. We configured the viewport quality as best full, and recorded playback of about 30 seconds. For each run, each clip was allowed to play through twice, with the third run being the one that's recorded. This was done to help smooth out hiccups that throw off tabulated results. LUT isn't nearly as aggressive on GPU hardware like Median is, but you'll still want reasonable enough hardware to pull it off without issue, and to reduce possible hitching. If you have issues with LUT performance, you are likely to run into other performance issues as well. Our chosen footage was technically 59 frames per second, so we're not going to see that perfect 60 FPS here. This graph requires a bit more of an explanation. Remember the NVIDIA performance anomalies we talked about? Similar oddities crept into the median playback test, where many GPUs could simply not play back the scene without a major struggle. Whereas the poor LUT performance on NVIDIA seen earlier primarily plagued Quadro and Titan, some GeForces didn't fare well here either. The median effect is simply grueling, and it shows. But, we again come to another caveat. Even with some of the GPUs that fell to the bottom of this chart, there were times in manual testing when we'd see fairly decent frame rates. The problem is that it would never be guaranteed. Some of the GPUs that place well here may not have on the very next run. It's very sporadic. But again, AMD's Vega-based GPUs ultimately survive just fine. A lot of testing, troubleshooting, and retesting went into this video, so it's good that a lot of interesting information came from it. At the same time, it's unfortunate that so much of the NVIDIA performance was hit or miss. We've talked more to NVIDIA since our article was published on the website, and know that things are being looked into, so we hope to see improvement in the future. And since Magix released a new update of Vegas Pro that mentioned LUT performance, it seems like the issue is definitely on that company's radar as well, although in our testing, the newest version didn't fix the issues we talked about. Given the current NVIDIA situation with Vegas right now, Radeon wins as the go-to choice for the software, without question. Even when NVIDIA's GPUs did perform well, AMD still topped the most important charts with its Vega-based GPUs. It can be argued that CPUs are technically better for encoding, but GPU-based encoding has come a long way over the years, and it's becoming increasingly unlikely that you'll notice a quality difference between the two types of encodes. You'll notice the encode time differences, however. In our testing, adding our Titan XP gave a 300% boot up to most heterogeneous comparisons. There are some workstation scenarios where a GPU may be the only thing that matters, but that's not the case with Vegas. While the GPU is extremely important, the better your CPU is, the better the overall encode performance is going to be. And with that, we're never done testing, so we'll definitely be revisiting Vegas Pro again down the road. But for now, we'll end it here, and encourage you to subscribe to our channel if you enjoy this type of content. We've been a little slow in recent months, but do hope to pick it up, with plans to tackle NVIDIA's Titan RTX in more depth soon, as well as Blender 2.8. Stay tuned for that, and as always, thanks for watching and for your comments.